Welcome, beautiful ones. This is Catalina Silvia Mordini, but many of you know me as Silvia Mordini, so I just want to take a moment to explain. My first name is Catalina, but for a lot of my life, especially in business settings, I've been using my middle name, Silvia, because it was easier to pronounce, especially when we moved to the United States. So that means that essentially the entirety of my life, I've always had more than one name. My family and my close friends always call me Catalina. And then those that are acquaintances or those that I'm interacting with in a professional way, I they usually know me as Silvia Mordini. But I wonder if that resonates with any of you where you've had a dual identities. And, and maybe that's because you're first gen or not even first gen, right? But maybe that's your situation or perhaps and this is not unusual in the studies that I've undertaken in shamanism, where at some point there's an ego death, a death of an identity. And as a result, as associated with that, somebody then takes on a new name. They feel so much like they've let go of the old identity and released it that they don't even feel like the name that they had while living that part of their life is truly them anymore. It's like that part of them has died, right? That that beautiful um, clarifying question, what in my life needs to die for something to be born? And for most of us, we go through multiple um, ego deaths, egoic deaths of the self, of this experience of letting go of some part of us. and. One way that that may resonate for some of you is divorce. One day you are a husband or a wife, and then the next day you don't have that identity anymore. It's, it's gone, right? So even that is a real big change in how we view ourselves. Or I've been doing the work of helping people move through identity crises, and this is not unusual. If you haven't gone through an identity crisis yet, I'm actually worried about you because it is perfectly natural. And it's also natural to move through more than one identity crisis. And I want to align that with, with the name of this new series, right? And I could use your help. So I love alliteration. Coffee, Catalina, seems like a perfect mix, right? And it's the first time I will ever use my name name publicly in this sort of situation. So I want to hear from you in comments whether you like uh, coffee chat with Catalina, coffee with Catalina, or cafe con Catalina. Mm. Cafe con Catalina, coffee with Catalina. Or maybe none of that and you just think that this should be called life, love, and latte. So tell me any ideas you have for the name of this new series, what is like making your spidey senses come alive, and if the Catalina and the coffee alliteration, if that's not resonating, please by all means let me know. I want to make this for you and about you, and I don't want the name of this to be distracting. I want it to be something that really pulls you in and reminds you that this is your appointment for your time to go into life's bigger questions. And so then I want to just chat about how this all came to be. I meditate every day, as many of you know, and it's one of my five pillars in living a happy, healthy life is to meditate daily. And it's part of an overall mindfulness program, right? So I meditate a lot. It helps me tap into my intuition and it just was very clear that the universe was saying, it's time to do a new YouTube series. Last year, I made 60 videos called the Inspire series. They're all there for you, so check those out. I have a lot of other series. Um, I have 14-day journaling series, Mindfully in Love. Oh, I love that one. But I, nothing was coming through earlier this year. I've been producing content, great, but not a whole series, something dedicated. So that's why this is really exciting that it just came crystal clear because the conversations that I've been having with person after person after person is about purpose and about meaningfulness. And that 
this last three years, 2020, when things got all confuddled um, for a lot of us and shook us up, right? We had to break the pattern of living that we were in. Every single one of us had to change the way we were doing things, even for a hot second, right? So as a result, uh, it made us from this pattern interrupt, which is why we practice meditation or mantra affirmations, it has caused a lot of people to have identity crisis and to ask themselves, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I doing it in the way that I'm doing it? Because before that, so many of us were just on the treadmill, just going, going, going mindlessly, right? Just like a treadmill just continues to just to move and you just move your feet being led by it. That's what many of us were doing prior to 2020. We were living life by accident. And there is nothing worse in my mind than living life by accident because it means that we're essentially numbed out, checked out. And I want all of you to tap in, turn on, and, and really be present to the beauty and the grace that this life is, even in its chaotic moments and its painful moments, right? So it was something that, changed the dynamic of how we were living and maybe now you at first we were just on fight or flight response we were in survival mode okay and then that lasted 2021 2022 and in 2023 you've really had time to try to even more deeply figure out like why is something off in comments if that resonates with you like has something felt off have you felt off have the colors not seemed as bright food not tasted as great the things that were bringing you joy and seemed super fun maybe they're not like they're just okay right like there's a film over the light that the light is working but it's not as bright as it used to be so if that's the case for you i really want this series to be an opportunity for you to know that you can come to a safe space and let's dive into meaningful topics. Let's ask ourselves the big life questions. Who am I right now? Who am I right now? Who am I becoming? And why am I here? What is my purpose? And what a lot of people don't know and we, we don't talk enough about this is that our purpose evolves and changes purpose is dynamic let me say that again purpose is dynamic it's constantly changing and evolving as we move through the seasons of our life right the the book of our life is not one chapter it's many chapters god willing so of course there's going to be a different focus a different sense of fulfillment and when we don't know our purpose very often then we lack meaning in our lives meaning purpose go together to create the trifecta of fulfillment and so if your life has felt kind of blah, meh, and you can't figure it out, and you just keep thinking it's gonna work itself out, it's not. We need places where we can go to listen to better questions, and that's what I wanna offer you. We need places where we can actually meet with people in person as well, and that's why I offer retreats. And we need courses of study that guide us through practices that help us get to our own answers. And that's why I have an online course library, courses, retreats, and all of these offerings that, that I do virtually are here for you and about you because the struggles you have, I have. <laughs> and I wanna make it easier for you than it is for me. So I have really felt a lack of places to go to ask the big questions, to listen to other people struggling with the big questions. And it's just felt very kind of quiet out there in my communities where we're just not talking about what we're not talking about. And that doesn't help. It just creates anxiety 
and it just fuels the anxiety. And for those of you that may or may not know, I have had chronic anxiety my whole life and I have high functioning anxiety. People have rewarded me for having high functioning anxiety because it doesn't manifest on the outside and I get a lot of stuff done in that state of being. But it's not good for the nervous system to have anxiety constantly like um, percolating, right? So when we don't talk about what we're not talking about, that creates more anxiety and it feeds it. And then that it's like the dimmer switch keeps going lower, 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 lower and lower. And neither can people see us as clearly, but we can't see out into the world with eyes that are bright and lit up from internal joy. So this is really important to me that you know that the, the container here is where I will always bring questions that resonate that are not just surface level questions. These are things that are important to ask. And one of those is purpose. You will find purpose, love, and mindfulness as three key themes in life, love, and latte interwoven through every single episode because they are essential to us living our happiest life um, and having that sense of fulfillment and, and quiet contentment that comes when we have, have those. So I would love to hear from you what you're struggling with, what have been the underlying themes that have been challenging you this year and let me know. Let me know directly or put them in comments so that I can literally just like a coffee brewing, I can just brew in that and, and let it just sit with me and meditate on anything that you share with me and then bring some great responses and themes from that because I'm here for you and I'm just so grateful that you're part of my community. Um, but I have prepared some amazing uh, journaling questions that I want to take time to go over and I'm going to make a separate video for those journaling questions for Life, Love and Latte uh, about this change of seasons, about this new chapter, about finding fulfillment and purpose and bringing mindfulness into this next chapter. For you are the author of your own life story. Even if sometimes you've given away your power, you've self-abandoned, and you let other people start to write the chapters of your life, in this moment, take it back. You and only you are the author, co-creating with the universe, for your life. And if your purpose is felt unclear, or if it was clear, and now you don't want to be the person that you were, you want to shed an identity. You want to let go of the person you've been. You don't want to be doing what you've been doing. That is okay. I want to be here to support you. And maybe I'm the only person in your life to say, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay not to be the person you used to be. It's okay to even change from a successful, muddied experience and go into the unknown and do something different. And it is not too late. I fully believe the best is yet to come, no matter what age you are. And I'm working through that myself. I want to normalize through my experience and my example that we can change, to change the, our careers, change the work we're doing, change the service that we offer out into the world, change where we live, change internally aspects of ourselves that no longer serve. Because the truth is in the healing journey, and there is no top of the mountain to healing, but it is a lifelong journey we do heal parts. 
and then new parts are triggered. But parts that are healed, we don't have to keep rehashing them and rehashing them and picking at them, like poking a bear. We're like, all right, I've unpacked it. I've thanked it. I've given grace for the lessons and now move forward, move forward and continue to evolve in the ways that you look at yourself and deepen your self-awareness. So if it is your purpose that it's time to change out, to up level, to swap out, great. If it's some aspect of negative habits that you're letting go and releasing, wonderful. If it's relationships that you're assessing, going, yeah, I'm finally done with the toxic ones. I'm gonna put healthy love boundaries into my life. Wonderful. But I wanna be that place for you and that person for you that reminds you that it is okay to be on this path of transformation and change and change again and change again. All right? So if you're not hearing it anywhere else, or if the places that you get inspiration from, everybody makes it sound so easy and beautiful and easeful, like, oh yeah, I left my corporate job and then I started to be an entrepreneur and oh my gosh, I left the nine to five and it's been such an easy delight. I just live on the beach and do nothing all day. Or the people are like, yeah, I work one hour a week and make seven figures. One, I caution you not to necessarily believe everything you hear that people say as like, that's all true. And life is generally messier than what some people are portraying as the changes in their lives. So easy. My life has been messy and change has always been a challenge for me and that's okay that's the reality and even nature shows that to us to move from from one season to another you know leaves fall off the trees and then they just start to rot and it's messy it snows and it's so pretty for a second and then it turns gray and dark and it turns ugly there are parts of the process that are not pretty. And it's not easy for, I would say, anybody. <laughs> I think that there's always inherent challenges as human beings when we are evolving and transforming and, and moving through things. So know that this is a place where I will always keep it raw and real and I will share the messy parts of my life and hope that they, inspire you to know that you're not alone in your messy parts and that as I move through things I will share the lessons but I'll also share the process that I'm going through not just I was here and then look now I'm here but the in-between because that's when I think a lot of us want to connect with people is to see their in-between right and I love sharing the in-between. <laughs> I love being able to just honestly give some insight into the fact that it's not always so easy and it's not always so clear and you get lost along the way and you take the wrong turn and you try things out and you try new identities and they don't fit and you realize, oh, those weren't the right ones and then you gotta try again and again, and so be it. Every day that we get to breathe and be alive and make those choices is a wonderful day. You know, everyone gets to be young, right? But not every one of us gets to be old. <laughs> Maybe we're all, we've all been 10 years old, that's great. But I hope for all of us that we get to be 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 105. It is a distinct privilege to get older. And the longer you live, the more of these evolutions and identity crises 
and up levelings of purpose we will go through and so be it and so be it so thank you for being here i hope you subscribe i hope that i've given you enough context and insight into what this is going to be about that it it what's your appetite to want to come join me and literally i am always a coffee lover so any chance to uh to have a great cup of coffee and to be connected with beautiful souls wow i'm so lucky so thank you for honoring me with your presence and do comment below with anything that i've said that resonated share with me your feedback on the name and those challenges that you've been facing um either send those to me privately or put them in comments and let's have the collective work together and see how much we have in common with one another. I bet it's a lot. So for now, I always end every article I've written, every video with this part of this mantra that came through me like 20 years ago. And it was inspired by this. I'm sitting in meditation and this idea of, I love myself, I am love, I offer love, I receive love, just informed my entire being. And this is the mantra, aham prema, I love. And so I sign off every time with bringing my hands to my heart in some capacity, <laughs> but may you love yourself love your day and love your life.